May our prayers come before you, O God, as incense, and may your presence surround and fill us, so that in union with all creation, we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. Amen. Amen. A reading from Mark. On that day when evening had come, Jesus said to them, let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion, and they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased and there was dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? Well, here we are in the season of Lent. And it was a year ago during the season of Lent that the pandemic began. It was a year ago that our first worship service that we could not hold was a Wednesday night worship service 11 months ago. And in those 11 months, we have been challenged, we have been um, tested, tempted. We've also had some opportunities. We have had the opportunity, not always easy, but the opportunity to see God at work in our world. And so as we thought about these Lenten services, this Lenten midweek worship, uh, Pastor Gene and I thought, you know, maybe we need to think a little bit more about that. Where is God at work in the world around us? And so that's what we're going to be talking about. And, and what we're going to do is we're going to bring in some different voices so that you can hear from others where they are seeing God at work in their little corner of the world. Now, the purpose for that is, is in small part so that as you hear them share where they see God at work, you can say, oh, yeah, yeah, that's right, there, God is at work, but only in small part. What I really am hoping you can come away with is the ability, the opportunity, the openness to go out into the world and see on your own where God is at work wherever you happen to be. But before we get to that, I want to say a few words about the scripture reading that Carol shared with us a few moments ago. And by the way, that's the same story, the same gospel story that the Sunday school lessons from this past Sunday, this past Sunday, are built on. So go back to the Sunday school lessons for February 21st, either the little kids or the big kids, and you can learn a little bit more about this story from the Gospel of Mark. So Jesus is in a boat. And um, he's asleep. I mean, even Jesus has to take a nap now and then. He's asleep. And a storm arises. And, you know, Jesus must be like this really incredibly deep sleeper because he sleeps right through the storm. The disciples are hardly sleeping. They are terrified. And so finally, out of desperation, now remember, by the way, these, most of them, not all of them, but most of them, or at least several of them, are experienced fishermen. They know how to handle a boat. But they finally decide they have to do what they probably didn't really want to do. They have to go wake up Jesus to rescue them. And sure enough, here comes Jesus to the rescue. Kind of like the siren that just went by. I don't know if you heard it, but a siren just went by. Jesus comes to the rescue and he stills the storm. And the waters become calm. The significance, I think, in the Gospel of Mark is that we're early in the Gospel. We're in chapter 4. And so imagine that you are one of those first century readers. You've never heard of this guy, Jesus. This is your introduction to Jesus. And Jesus is doing some cool things. But now Jesus does the ultimate. Jesus controls nature. 
I mean, you know, 2,000 years ago, that was astounding, and actually today would be too, don't you think? I mean, we can predict the weather, kind of, but not really, but we try. But even though I can maybe tell you what the weather will probably be like tomorrow, I can't change tomorrow's weather. It will be what it will be. But Jesus can change it. And so the message to those first readers of the Gospel of Mark, and maybe the message to us too, is that this guy Jesus is really, I mean, he's got, he's got power. He's got control. Even nature, even nature, the power of nature and weather answers to Jesus. So if that is a bit of a backdrop, let's see what Wayne and Darlene Affelt have to share with us today. Where they see God at work in their life and in the world around them. I see God working in our young people. In church, we have our readers, choir members, bell choir, confirmation groups, and in Sunday school. I also see God working in our neighborhood. We had a young girl call about a month ago. She had a project in her confirmation class and she wanted to share it with us and she had a few questions. We also have another young girl in our neighborhood who every year at Christmas time stops by with a little gift and a treat for us. I also see God working on a girl who lives 1200 miles from us. She plays a piano at church and she volunteers. And she always has time to text us to just to see how we're doing or to let us know that she got the lead part in her school play this year. I also believe that I see God working in four young people who in their own unique ways came to their grandparents with words, prayers, and action in our time of need in the last few months. Yes, I can see God working. Okay, where do I see God at work? I see God every day in the beautiful sunrises and the awesome sunsets. I say each morning, I wonder what God has planned for us today, and he never disappoints. Blessings come our way each day in plans that we have never planned to, or made. Recently, we had family deaths, and I seen God at work in condolences from people sending cards, notes, emails, texts, and even from some people that were unexpected. It was just touching to our heart and they were showing their love by, by doing this. I see God at work in the vaccine and how God gave the scientists the knowledge to do this. I see the nurses and the doctors just working endlessly and giving their time and doing their all. And other frontline workers, the grocery store, uh, <clears throat> all the way to the pickup services for drugs and groceries and other things, being creative and making our ways uh, safe for us as people who are in. I see technology and if it was not possible a few years ago for this. I see the church using this technology along with the pastors being creative and finding ways to reach out through videos, Zoom communion, confirmation classes, Bible study, and Sunday school, <clears throat> I see this technology being used through um, other things that the pastors are being creative in doing um, driveway communion, uh, stewardship drive in our upcoming Ash Wednesday and the food pantry being very creative. I see um, God working and calling members and visiting with them and hearing how they're missing the fellowship and the music and the closeness of the worship and seeing that we are all needed to make this work. And God is preparing us in new ways each day to appreciate each other and never ever take for granted what a privilege it is to be a child of God, showing us new things and new ways each day. You know, when I recorded that with Wayne and Darlene, the very first thing I thought of was, oh my gosh, that is an incredible laundry list of places where God is at work. In young people, 
and in adults, and in people who are near, and people who are far, and in vaccines, and in people uh, at work in the church in various ways. I mean, they just cover a wide swath of different places where God is at work. Kind of like Jesus and controlling nature. And here's why. Everything goes back to nature. I mean, we can talk about artificial stuff or synthetic stuff, but let's face it, even the stuff that's artificial and synthetic has its roots in nature, in creation, in the world around us. And so when Jesus is able to control nature, control weather, control the creation around us, that's basically everything, don't you think? I mean, what else is there? What else is there? There's nothing else. God is at work in Jesus everywhere. And that's kind of what Wayne and Darlene suggested. God is at work in nature everywhere. Simple, isn't it? Simple, but sometimes we miss that. I mean, sometimes we sort of have this idea that God does really good things here in the context of a church building, but when I'm out in the real world, I don't know about that. I mean, is God really going to be there for me? Is God really going to be there for me when push comes to shove, when the rubber hits the road or whatever other uh, little phrase you like? Is God really going to be there when I really need God? And yet God is at work everywhere. And God is at work bringing life everywhere. So here's what I would like for a takeaway, two takeaways for you. The first takeaway is, as you heard, you know, Wayne and Darlene's, you go out. Go out in the world and begin to look carefully. Where are you seeing God at work? And it might be the easiest, easy, obvious stuff like the vaccine or healthcare workers. Um, I shared a story on Sunday. I'll share it again. Uh, just a simple little place where God was at work. Last Wednesday, was we were doing our Ash Wednesday Ashes, a car ended up in the snowbank across the street. And Wayne and I, being the good, dutiful folk, we went over to help push the car out. And uh, we're working on it. We're working on it. And there's a young woman who's the driver, and there's an older woman there, and the two of us. And we're working on it, but we weren't making much progress. And then a pickup truck stopped. It stopped at the stop sign, and the driver got out. He's bigger and heftier than me, which is a good thing. I said, come over to my side, please. And the three of us were able to push the car out. Is that God at work? Maybe for that young woman it was. I don't know what she was doing. Maybe her schedule was she had to get to work. Maybe her schedule was she had a job interview. Maybe her schedule was she's got a child at home. She's got to get there because she just dropped kids off at school. I don't know. In a very small way, maybe, God is at work. And it's not about being in a pandemic. It could have been any time, but God was at work. So here's what I'd like you to do. The first thing you do is keep your eyes open and watch for God is at work. The second thing I'd like you to do is I want you to share that with me. You can do a video clip, or you could just, if you're not comfortable with that, just type it out as an email. My uh, email address is on the screen. Type it out as an email. Send it to me as a little bit of a story, because here's what we're going to do. This week we heard from Wayne and Darlene. Uh, we've got a couple other people lined up. I've got three others lined up to share with us ways in the next few weeks where they see God at work in their life. And we're going to tie it to the gospel reading each week. Different gospel reading, different sharers. The last week, I want to share your story. I won't necessarily give your name, don't worry. Or if you want me to, I can. If you do a video clip, I don't know if I can hide you that much. But, but just to hear your story of where God is at work so that we can hear the stories of God's people and hear the stories of where God is at work in our world. And maybe that helps us be just a little bit more aware that even as we walk through days that continue to be difficult and challenging and dark and frightening and wearying and, and, and just all those other things that weigh us down, even as we journey to the cross and we feel the load getting heavier, we know that God is at work around us. And we also know that in the gift of the cross, a good and gracious God comes to us, lifts the load off of us and places it on the crucified Jesus. God is at work in our world, in the big moment of the cross of Jesus, and maybe in the little moment of just pushing a car out of a snowbank. God is at work, and God is at work not only here, God is at work in your little corner of the world too, so... Keep your eyes open and share it with me.
Thanks. Let's sing. Through Jesus, our Lord and Savior, give us the insight to see where you are at work in our world and enable us to recognize your hand. But even more, empower us to be bold, to be courageous, to be confident, and to embrace the opportunity to be your hands in our world, to be a part of your work. This day, we pray especially for those who struggle with such difficult weather. We pray for the homeless and those who are uncertain where they will stay or if they will be able to keep their home. We also pray for those who are in places that have been overwhelmed by winter weather, who are working to rebuild lives even as the effects of harsh weather are still being felt. Finally, we continue to pray for the sick and the struggling, especially those affected by COVID, those with the disease, those who are frightened, weary and lonely, those who have lost jobs and have difficulty feeding and caring for their family, those who are missing their loved ones, and all those who anxiously wait for the vaccine. Hold them, hold all of us in your care, strengthen us with your Holy Spirit, renew our hope, still our fears, and lead us to proclaim your love and care for all of your people. Amen. The light shines in the darkness. And the darkness has not overcome.
Give to your people the peace that passes all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth. 